Hi folks, it's Matt Easton here, Scholar Gladiatoria. So something a little bit different here. I'm in the dark. I'm outside in November in, um, in the south of England and it's a little bit chilly, I have to say. So I'll keep this relatively brief. So something that comes up quite often when we're talking about traditional martial arts, of which Hema is one, but of course there are other traditional martial arts in the world. There's Kenjutsu and all of the Japanese martial arts. There's traditional forms of Chinese martial art, Filipino, Korean, and so on. And one of the things that comes up is you will very often encounter people who go, oh, well, you know, I've trained a bit in traditional martial arts, but, you know, I like to, I like to make, shit, make shit up. I like to freestyle, I, I like to introduce stuff which is outside of the curriculum, outside of the system. And actually, I don't have a problem with that, okay? One of the great things about HEMA is that HEMA has been, certainly for as long as I've been involved in it, 20 years, has been quite open to um, external inputs. But, one thing I would add is that there's nothing new under the sun. I would say that certainly within the uh, parameters of armed martial arts, that is if we're talking about swords and spears and um, perhaps even daggers, things like this, there's, I would say that there's nothing that you can think up that hasn't been done historically before. And in HEMA, one of the great things about HEMA compared to some other traditional martial arts in the world is we have an enormous number of um, sources, of treatises to draw upon. And they, they essentially detail techniques, but they also detail principles underlying um, sort of... Uh, principles, foundations for how our martial arts work. And I would say that there's nothing that you can think up that makes sense and that would be sensible to do in a sword fight that isn't included already in one of those treatises. And of course we have a huge period to draw upon, whether it's going all the way back to uh, 133 or I-33, depending how you uh, prefer to call it, sword and buckler from, from the uh, 1300s, perhaps even the late 1200s, depending how you date that. So essentially 13th century, right the way through to um, the beginning of the 20th century. And there's nothing that you can think up that would make sense to do with, for example, a sabre or a longsword or a rapier or a lung messer or a sword and buckler, sword and shield, spear, poleaxe, halberd, quarter stuff. There's nothing that you can think up that either isn't detailed exactly, um, already shown in existing treaties, or doesn't already really fit quite easily into the principles that are taught in those treaties. So what I would say is, by all means, freestyle, experiment, find the techniques and the principles that suit your fighting style um, or indeed stick with it within one system. You can decide to go down the I want to be as good as I can possibly be route or the competition route, for training only to win competitions or you can go down the historical route and go I'm going to learn to uh, be able to replicate the techniques and principles shown in a specific treatise or a group of treatises as precisely and historically as possible. Um, you can go down either of those routes and it's all HEMA. But there's very little, I would say nothing, that you can think up that makes sense with historical weapons that you can introduce into HEMA that is not already there somewhere. That's my main point. The last point I want to make um, before finishing up is very simply that um, HEMA is a, is a, a, a broad church of systems, um, but ultimately there is the word historical at the beginning there. Okay, it's historical European martial arts. Now you could invent a modern sword, fo sword fighting style. What would that actually be? It would presumably be a competition, a sport fencing style, or maybe a, a LARP style, or a reenactment style. And if we look at Battle of the Nations, we see this. We see fighting that looks nothing like armoured fighting from the treatises, because they're not trying to kill each other. They're trying to bash each other's armour and throw someone on the ground to put them out of that round, so that they can win the team fight. Context. It's all about context. And if you're a modern person in the modern world, competing in competitions or doing LARP, role-playing, whatever, 
you're not functioning in the same context as a historical person who was fighting in historical contexts. Not always life or death, some duels, some fights weren't life or death. Uh, you might be a, a, a yeoman, a, a, a warden, aiming to capture and detain people, essentially a policeman of the time, or you might be in a first blood duel. There are all sorts of different historical contexts. But you can't invent modern things that would fit within a historical context that aren't already there within the historical documents. They're all there already. So to finish up, modern people, firstly, really, as far as I can see, can't think up any sensible techniques with weapons that aren't already there in HEMA sources, number one. Number two, if they do think up something that's not within the historical context, there's probably a very good reason for that, and it's probably because it makes no sense at all in the historical context. Cheers, folks. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, follow us on Facebook. You can buy t-shirts through Spreadshirt, support us on Patreon, or follow us on Pinterest. Thank you.